So we have some interesting news when it comes to EC3 and Impact Wrestling. Of course, EC3 had a brief return to Impact Wrestling earlier this year. He returned to the company at Slammiversary back in July, but finished up his commitments with Impact Wrestling as quickly as October at Bound for Glory after losing a cinematic match to the TNA World Heavyweight Champion Moose. But EC3 has recently done an interview with Fightful, and he said that he's still talking to Impact Wrestling and potentially could return in the future. Now, EC3, of course, has spent time across actually three companies in 2020, WWE, Impact Wrestling, and now Ring of Honor, but he is open to exploring others in the future. Now, when it comes to EC3 and his current status, he was actually pulled from the Ring of Honor final battle tapings, uh, was it last week, for, due to... Uh, COVID-19, but he's told Fightful Select that he intends on returning to the company in 2021 to finish off his creative process uh, with Ring of Honor. But beyond that, there is interest in Ring of Honor locking him down. But apparently Impact Wrestling is also interested in EC3 too. This is what EC3 had to say. He said, quote, we're still talking. I think come the new year, when I freed myself up, there's talks to be had elsewhere and they definitely want to do a long term. I'm just not ready to do anything long term until I know who I am and what I'm doing and then. I have a lot of myself to figure out before I jump into something and become, I don't know, like everybody else. Uh, if I have that freedom, I can do it now. I'm going to take it and develop something, I guess. Then the opportunity to work with Ring of Honor came along and it's a company I've always had a love for and respect for that I've never had the opportunity to work for. Now I am. Now that's very, very interesting, isn't it, when it comes to EC3. Now he also said something else and I'll give you my opinion on it all after we talk about, after we repeat what he said here. So EC3 of course, as I mentioned, spent both time in Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor this year and it said that each of them understood what he was doing because of course there was a period of time where he was on Impact Wrestling TV every week but he was also with Ring of Honor. It was a period of time where he was doing the Impact Wrestling stuff with Moose but at the same time he was attending TV tapings for Ring of Honor and setting up all of this uh, Ring of Honor creative that he's currently doing when it comes to Jay Briscoe in Ring of Honor. So this is what he said. He said, quote, I was pleased and happy both companies were very respectful of that opinion and willing to allow me to do both. I understand that in the future something will have to give because if I'm a company, I'm not going to invest in somebody if they're not there for the long term. Very important point there. So I see it both ways and respect both ways. And a time will come, probably soon. But for now, the world is insane and crazy. And 2020, they were open to it. And it's worked out creatively for me and personally as well. Now, I think that's very interesting, those comments that EC3 has made there. When he spoke about being able to work Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor at the same time, I think he's right when he says that 2020 is unique in that case. But he's also very much correct in the sense that something we'll have to give creatively. I think that was part of the issue, quite frankly, when it came to... To this last run in Impact Wrestling. Why would Impact Wrestling invest a lot of time and push you to the moon, as it were, if you're also going to be with Ring of Honor and you're not committed in the long term? That was an interesting point he made there. Personally, when I reflect on his run in Impact Wrestling this year, I, you know, to put it bluntly, I think it was underwhelming. I think it was very underwhelming. I think when he returned back at Slammiversary, there was so much promise. There was so much promise to what this could be, especially coming out of his WWE run and his history with the company, former TNA World Heavyweight Champion, the momentum that the company had at the time and this feeling that we could see a lot of really fun stuff return to impact, right? Eric Young... EC3, potentially aces and eights. Moose was doing the TNA World Heavyweight Championship storyline, which he's still doing now. But there was all of this promise that it could be something really, really exciting, really, really fun. And to be honest, when it, come, when it came to his run in Impact Wrestling this year, I would have liked to have seen what he's doing in Ring of Honor now in Impact Wrestling. I would have preferred to have seen EC3 wrestling in the actual wrestling ring inside the Impact Zone, having matches, appearing in the Impact Zone, doing promos in the ring, actually appearing on camera in the arena, which I think he did, what, twice? And they were brief cameos when he attacked Moose. There didn't really feel like there was this big presence of EC3 in the arena on the shows. The whole vignettes, segments, shot wherever he was based or in his warehouse or shot off off location, outside of the impact zone, outside of Nashville, Tennessee, whatever, wherever they shot it, that's fine, but not every week. I think you do need to have a presence if you're a wrestler, actually physically in the ring, physically in the arena. You can't just always do vignettes and segments somewhere else, especially when you're like EC3 and you're a main eventer in the company in Impact Wrestling. He is. He was a main eventer in Impact Wrestling because of his history, because of his 
the fact that he's a former world champion in that promotion, he is a main eventer. And it just, to me, felt a bit odd and off that he wasn't in the arena every single week and he wasn't truly amongst it. As he mentioned, though, in those comments, maybe that's the case of Impact going, you know what, if you're not going to commit long term to us or you're not going to commit for a year or you're just going to stay around for a couple of months and then go to Ring of Honor, we can't give you all of this TV time. But they did do the segments. So it kind of, it's an odd situation. To me, just when I reflect and look back on it, it just felt a bit off. And it just felt like a bit of a waste, especially with the history that he has in Impact Wrestling. I think that's the most important thing here. Look, he made his name ultimately in Impact Wrestling. Yes, he had the run in WWE, Derek Bateman, before he came to Impact Wrestling. But when he came into Impact, they pushed this guy to the moon, right? He was Dixie, pa Dixie Carter's nephew, victories over the likes of Sting, Kurt Angle, etc. Multiple time world champion. This guy really was synonymous and made his name with Impact Wrestling and WWE. And and uh, and uh, and TNA wrestling rather, and coming out of that disastrous WWE run, got WWE on the brain here. Coming out of that disastrous WWE run, you would have thought that he would have done something big, or would have wanted to have do something big. And when he made his return at Slammiversary, cast your mind back to July when he did make his return at Slammiversary, it did feel like something big was going to happen. It did. The closing shot of Slammiversary was EC3, right? The ending of the show, Eddie Edwards wins the World Championship get attacked by Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. The Good Brothers come down. They make the save. But what's the closing shot of Slammiversary? It's not those guys in the ring. It's EC3 in his Control Your Narrative warehouse or wherever. He's turned around and he smashes a glass. That was the closing moment. And it was, whoa, big cliffhanger. EC3, former Impact World Champion, so closely associated with Impact Wrestling and TNA. He's back in his home where he belongs. People were excited, myself included. I was very excited because I thought this is a massive signing for Impact Wrestling and it's probably, I would argue the Good Brothers are probably a bigger signing, but it's up there. He was up there with the guys that a lot of people wanted to see return and he was hyped up on TV to, subtly hyped up on TV to be returning for a while. They did the this, this spot on Impact when Moose won a match and they played EC3's old entrance music. They planted the seeds for this storyline for weeks. So when he made this big return at Slammiversary, it felt like a big deal and it felt like, right, things are really heating up here and they just never did. Now, coming out of Slammiversary, he did appear in the Impact Zone straight after. He attacked Moose. He stole the TNA World Heavyweight Championship and it did feel like something really big was going to happen and it was going to be this big storyline that really set EC3 back up to the level that he was prior to going to WWE. But coming out of it, it just fell flat. It just fell flat to me. And we'll get into the nuts and bolts of the cinematic match with Moose at Bound for Glory because EC3 did talk about that as well during this interview with Fightful. But going back to the feud he had with Moose, did it achieve its purpose of elevating Moose to the next level? I don't think you can disagree with that. It absolutely did. Moose is better off for having the feud of EC3. So I suppose in that sense... Did the storyline serve its purpose? Absolutely. Could it have been bigger? Y yes, that's fundamentally it could have been. It was a big win for Moose at Bound for Glory. I think coming out of it, he was a more credible world championship challenger. And as I mentioned, I know he's facing Willie Mack at Genesis. I think it's an I quit match, but I think eventually he will challenge Rich Swan for the world championship. And I think the match and feud with EC3 helped elevate him. It, yeah, yes, it served that purpose, but... I just felt like it could have been more and it probably should have been more. And as far as his future with coming back to Impact Wrestling, and we've titled it here, like he's, t he's still talking to Impact Wrestling. EC3 said himself, he's still talking about Impact Wrestling and could he return in 2021? Look, I, I think in terms of his immediate future right now, he's with Ring of Honor and he looks quite happy and quite set in his uh, path to finish out what he started when it comes to Ring of Honor, regardless of the issues when it comes to Final Battle or not. So I think he's going to be with Ring of Honor for at least the immediate future. And to me, he's always come across, he said in his interview there, is that he wants to do the Cody Rhodes, right? He wants to leave WWE, have these short stints in all of these companies and kind of do the rounds as it were and appeal in every company, especially the ones he hasn't appeared in before. He wants to do short-term deals in a variety of companies, which is fine, but like he said in the interview, eventually something's got to give. Eventually he's got to commit. He never worked for Ring of Honor, which is why he wants to work there now, which is what he's doing. I think long-term, my opinion has always been that he wants to go to AEW. I don't know that for a fact, but I've said that multiple times. I think realistically what he's probably trying to do, that run in WWE was so disastrous and it did such 
a damage to the EC3 brand and value, as it was, that I think he's trying to do these short-term deals in these companies, whether it's Impact, Ring of Honor, uh, possibly other places, we'll touch on that in a second, that he's trying to build up that value again, trying to build up that buzz before he goes to AEW. When you go to a big company like AEW, the second biggest promotion in North America, maybe the world, you do want to have a bit of buzz and a bit of momentum with you. And I think that's what he's trying to do, quite frankly, right now. So I think maybe that's the issue there. Ultimately, I think this is probably the issue for Impact, is ultimately EC3 knows Impact will always be there for him to go to. Why? Because of the history that he already has in place there. He is a multiple-time world champion, so if, for whatever reason, the spot isn't there in AEW, he can always go back to Impact, and Impact will always have him, because just purely because of the history and purely because of the star he is in the Impact universe, as it were. So... I think that also is a factor as to why he won't go back to Impact so quickly. Do I think he'll go back to Impact Wrestling in 2021? Look, maybe. I mean, he's saying that they're still talking. As I mentioned, there is no doubt in my mind that Impact Wrestling wants him. Personally, as I mentioned, immediately he'll stay around in Ring of Honor. I think that's pretty obvious. But I then think possibly he'll go to other companies he hasn't appeared in before. I think he'll go to MLW. I think he'll do an MLW taping. I think maybe he'll even try and do some New Japan America stuff, do those TV tapings. Who knows, he might appear on for the NWA or on that primetime life. There is a lot of things he could do, and then I think eventually he goes to AEW. So I'm not sure if we'll see him back in Impact Wrestling. Possibly, possibly, but I don't think he'll return for a while yet. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but I think given the run that he had, I think he scratched that Impact itch, as it were, and I don't expect to see him back in the immediate future as it as it pertains to that anyway when it comes to impact wrestling but what I did want to talk about as well when it comes to EC3 because he did talk about that feud with Moose when it came to Bound for Glory that cinematic match and I found it very very interesting to what his vision was for the feud with Moose and what Impact Wrestling's vision was when it comes to Moose now after being brought back to Impact in 2020 it was decided midway through uh, the feud with Moose that he wasn't going to have a normal match with Moose. Instead, a cinematic match was booked for Bound for Glory and the two filmed the altercation. However, that was scrapped in favour for the Impact-led version that we saw at Bound for Glory. This is absolutely fascinating. So this is what EC3, EC3 said. He said, quote, OK, did it go how I originally planned? Me and myself? No, but I don't expect it to because at that point I'm working for a company. Control your narrative. I control mine. They control theirs. Having said that, was I happy with it? Extremely happy. I thought it was a great story arc. I think the only holdups was getting to the point from point A to point B with so much time in between and not to do so much physicality that maybe there was a little bit of redundancy. I completely agree there. But a necessarily a necessary evil to save the sanctity of what we were going to do at Bound for Glory. The original plan was, and this is why the, narr the narrative extended, available on my website freeec3.com, as what I filmed with Moose prior to my return to Impact, because prior to my return to Impact, part of my conditions were I'd like to produce, uh, I'd like to produce, use him in my thing, and I would like to build on the side going forward, and that would be, do this with him and culminate at Bound for Glory. It's somewhere in between that. They decided that they wanted to do a cinematic match for Bound for Glory, and that's fine, kind of leaving me with what we shot on the ground floor of the table just sitting there. I was very happy with how we did the match. I thought it told a great story. I thought it put Moose into a position. I think the last shot of him, his sitting on the ring apron with that look in his eyes made him. Now I've done everything I could for him. Let's see where it takes, uh, where, he, where he takes it. Now, as I mentioned also, uh, things didn't go the way that EC3, EC3 planned, and he shed some light on what his original vision for the story was. This is really, I think, the key crux of what my issues were when it came to EC3 and Moose and why I felt his return to Impact was underwhelming. This is what EC3, EC3 said. Easy for me to say. God, it's such a mouthful. He said, quote, Originally, my intention was for halfway through this angle for him to come looking for me, come to my narrative. We have a fight. It's not a win-loss fight, but it's a fight. But therefore, he learns about myself within it, within it. We go to Bound for Glory in a normal match. Then he becomes what he's supposed to be. He's victorious. He conquers the challenge. EC3, the character, can go die on his sword having destroyed his past by allowing himself to be destroyed by who he deems as the person that can control his future of the company, so to speak. Very meta stuff there. So it didn't happen that way. Still very happy with how it came out. I'm sitting there with that match with Moose and I thought it was his best performance, the one I had with him. In the extended narrative, that just seemed like an opportunity to throw it out there, see what happens, it's cool. Now it's very interesting, those comments there. That's the real big comments I got from this interview that he did with Fight for EC3, that it's interesting 
that the cinematic stuff, the cinematic match that we saw at Bound for Glory was essentially what we were going to see or what the plan was to see on Impact Wrestling. And then we were going to have a proper match inside of the Impact Zone, inside of an Impact Wrestling ring at Bound for Glory instead. I like that idea way, way, way much more than what we saw at Bound for Glory. For whatever reason, Impact Wrestling decided they wanted to have the cinematic match at Bound for Glory instead of Impact. And personally, I think that's a mistake. Now, I know that 2020 at this point has been the year of cinematic matches in pro wrestling. That's been out of necessity in some circumstances because of just the current climate, the pandemic, no fans. I get it. But I think at this point, have we seen too many? Probably. And we've seen other companies like WWE and AEW kind of pull back from that a little bit. Yes, we saw one for AEW at full gear. But I think at this point, we've probably seen our fair share of cinematic matches for the next couple of years. They're certainly not as special or unique as they were at the start of the year. And that probably hurt the EC3 and Moose match too. My, my criticism really is the same as it was when I first watched it. We did a watch along and... It wasn't the match that I had an issue with because it wasn't a match. It wasn't a match. It was overly confusing. I felt that they were trying to be too clever, too arty, too subtle in the story, in the, in the story that they were trying to tell. I just thought it didn't need to be that complex. That was the issue there. It was just way overly complex and I didn't really, I didn't feel that was necessary. I didn't feel that was necessary. I would have much preferred your standard wrestling match inside the Impact Zone, inside of an Impact Wrestling ring, actually seeing EC3, a former Impact World Champion, competing in the Impact Zone. I think that's what a lot of people wanted and, quite frankly, expected when they saw EC3 make his return at Slammiversary. They wanted to see EC3 compete in an Impact Wrestling ring, and we just didn't get that. Don't get me wrong. When it comes to cinematic wrestling and just pro wrestling in general, I love subtlety and I love complex storytelling, but it was just too much. It was just too much. This is pro wrestling at the end of the day. It's not no country for old men. The ending doesn't have to be ambiguous. It's not for the Academy Awards. It was just a miss for me. Like I said, I felt they were trying to be too subtle, too arty and just too, just too, uh, it was just a miss. It was just a miss. I wanted to see EC3 wrestle inside the Impact Zone. He's a former world champion. He's got so much history with Impact. His return got so many people excited and it had so much promise. He ended Slammiversary. He was the closing and final shot of Slammiversary and it kind of told fans this is going to be big what happens with EC3 going forward. And then with the cinematic stuff and with not really appearing that much inside of the Impact Zone, it just fell flat and it could have been more. And now with EC3 saying, you know, I wanted to have a proper match at Bound for Glory. I didn't want to have the cinematic stuff. That was meant to be the story in the build-up to the real match at Bound for Glory. That, to me, makes so much more sense. I mean, just think of the storyline here. Moose had the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. The nostalgia, bringing back a former TNA World Heavyweight Champion. A guy who actually held that version of the title. We would have liked to have seen at Bound for Glory EC3 actually come out to the Trouble, Trouble, Trouble theme. We only heard it in the flashbacks before EC3 arrived in Impact Wrestling. We didn't get that. And I think personally at this point, that's what the people wanted. So when it comes to his run in Impact Wrestling this year, it does feel like a missed opportunity to me. Will we see him in Impact Wrestling again soon? Like I said, in the immediate future, no. He's with Ring of Honor. And I think he's going to do the tour of the indie circuit. I really do. I think he's going to go to MLW. I think he's going to go to New Japan of America, maybe NWA and all that kind of stuff. Impact Wrestling will always be there for him. And uh, I, just, I just don't see him returning soon. That's just my opinion on it. But of course, as always, it's just one man's opinion. Let me know your thoughts on EC3 saying he's still talking to Impact Wrestling. Also, let me know your thoughts on EC3's run with Impact Wrestling this year. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, chatting about Impact Wrestling, WWE, AEW, all stuff pro wrestling here on the channel. All opinions are welcome, so get involved in the community. Uh, in the uh, in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button. Really does help us out here on YouTube, go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today. And I speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.